Hit it, Phil. Ba, da, 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 da. Can it be the breeze that fills the trees with rare and magic perfume? Oh, no. <laughs> it isn't the breeze. It's Jackson time. La, da, da, da. All right. Well, hello again. This is Buck Benny speaking. I am joined by our full cast of characters today, which is wonderful for Easter. I hope everybody's having a great Easter. And we have uh, our friend Terry back after so long. Terry, it's great to see you. Hey, uh, Vera. Terry, do you have uh, uh, anything new to tell us on the project front or anything you want to share or anything? I do. I'm, I'm delighted to report that the script is finished. Uh, it's uh, going out for uh, casting uh, on Monday. And I hope by, uh, well, I, I'm sure by the end of, of April and, and perhaps long before the end of April, we will have uh, our first new episode of the new season of Imaginaire Theater. This one's a two-parter, as we've discussed before, so it's lengthy, keeping with your with your theory, Daryl, that eventually we're going to have a you know, <laughs> hours-long episode. But this one's probably going to run mm, forty minutes, forty-five minutes, maybe. I'm not sure, it, but it'll be in two parts. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I'm excited about it. It's uh, it we've. We've been working on this, my my team and I, for months and months. It was really hard to to nail, but um, I'm now looking forward to hearing how it's going to sound, just like everybody else. I have no idea yet. I'm excited. Well, and what's great is I've done such a lousy job of remembering to, to post your episodes that I think I still have one or two left that I need to post. So right about the time I'm done with those, hopefully uh, they'll be ready to hear a new episode. So Excellent. Well, thank yeah. you again for doing that. I appreciate it. Oh, that. not a problem. Uh, and we, of course, have our friend uh, John Henderson here from This Day in Jack Benny. Uh, John, how are things going over in your neck of the woods? Oh, pretty good, Buck. <laughs> Sorry, I got a bit of a cold. Oh, okay. <laughs> and we have Kathy Fuller Seeley here again. Uh, well, Kathy, well, any new news on your end? Well, well, I think um, uh, we have uh, it, within three weeks we'll be able to celebrate the 90th anniversary of Jack's start on radio. Can you believe <laughs> May May fifth, May second, nineteen thirty two? 90 years ago so wow. that's astounding to think about that yeah, is that, really that is. blows my mind to to so many degrees like because in like i mean it's obviously in 10 years this is going to be a hundred year old material and the marx brothers are hitting very very close to the coconuts being about a hundred years old so yep. i'm i'm still astounded that we're going to be able to look at this as a hundred year old material Right. That still works. That's, like, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's, that's a mind-boggling concept. Well, in Jack's case, that particular episode kind of works. <laughs> kind of doesn't work. Yeah. He, he really he really starts he working, start. working what? In about 33-ish, uh, probably, is where he's starting to really oh. click. But I don't know. Right. A little later. 35, 34. Oh, no, no, earlier, earlier. Oh, earlier. You're saying even earlier. <laughs> well, I'm... I'm I'm fond of the early shows. So am I. I love the early shows. But I'm just saying, as a general audience, I don't know if they would get into some of the early shows or not. But but it, for them to give a try, they can pick up one of your books and uh, that has the scripts in there from the earliest shows. Uh, the, between your two yeah, books, the 50-ish earliest episodes of the Jack Benny Show are in there. So, nice. And Zach, uh, it is so great to have you back my, again, my friend. And uh, how are you <laughs> feeling? You were not doing well last week. I was not. Um, I, I was under the weather. Um, and then this week turned into its own form of adventures. Um, but uh, it's been a lot of busy work on my end. Got a paid editing gig, which is nice. So I'm getting started on what is going to be needed for that. Um, uh, which I, I, I think a lot of that success would be owed to the work that I've been doing the past couple of years with the Benny convention and other stuff at home, my skills. Um, but also, um, I've been working on the Benny book that, uh, Kathy has been helping me out with in so many respects. Um, and in fact, more than one respect, it's like a dozen respects. Like, I, I don't know where I'd be starting without her. Um, and also Buck is going to be helping my podcast debut a video component because you recorded a very a good sizable length episode on Winchester 73 that uh, I didn't think to do video but when you talked about it afterward I'm like this is a good idea and it helps because 
for listeners from the house who, of good ideas <laughs> yeah oh it's 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 the only place to 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 get innovation you come to book benny otr that's what i'm thoroughly convinced of um and additionally though you you came in costume i didn't even think to do that i'm wearing a batman t-shirt the entire time and you're 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 decked out ready to go back into old western territory so um so it'll be it'll be very interesting and um and you you guys out there should be able to see it within the week so uh, stay tuned for it, but yeah, it's it's been crazy on my end, but I'm very I'm happy to be here to talk some Benny. So yeah, yeah, excellent. Well, we have a special uh, Easter presentation for you today, and uh, I just learned about this yesterday. I did not know that this episode existed, and I threw it out there to our gang, and uh, some of us got a chance to watch it. And uh, certainly, it's based on the radio show. Uh, that that he did redid a number of times, um, and it's delightful. Uh, the only issue I have with it, unfortunately, is the same issue I have with a lot of the Jack Benny shows. Um, they uh, there is a character missing that I think it it sorely sorely could use. And uh, for any of you that know me, who is the character I'm talking about? Anyone? Uh, Phil Phil Harris. Of course, no. <laughs> so, Mary, Mary Livingston. Mary Livingston. That's right. I the Easter episode is probably my favorite of the radio episodes, or one of my favorites, I should say. I got so many favorites, but uh, in this case, Mary was not available. It, it was another live show that they did, um, and so with with doing a, a live show, she doesn't appear on the live shows. She did. I did find out this week because I had never paid close enough attention. She did one live show. Does anybody know what the one live show she did was? Is it a Christmas one, maybe? Good guess. We actually did this one. Um, we did an intro for it a while oh, back. What? Uh, 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 the 40th birthday anniversary? Look at that. Shower Kathy star? pulls it out. Ah. Nice job, Kathy. Yeah, he mentions in there, he says, oh, Mary, this is your first live show ever or something like that during the show. And, uh, and she does a marvelous job, and she should have... Unfortunately, I, I wish he would have done more of his of his shows. Certainly, I wish he would have done this one. But uh, we do have the Easter show. It's it's wonderful to see. I, I love that they that they do this one. A tricky one to do as they're trying to take a walk. And so, uh, how do you show that they're taking a walk and meeting all the characters as they go along? Um, but anyway, uh, Kathy, what were your thoughts on it? Um, uh, a, a number in part, I, I it fascinates me. Uh, the uh, emphasis he put on Easter shows over the years that that shows me sort of Jack at his most wanting to blend into Gentile American culture. Um, uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, even more than Christmas to celebrate Easter really means, you know, that that he's uh, sort of uh, uh, downplaying his own Jewish heritage and playing up that I'm an all American and gee, most of America is is Christian uh, thing. I love a uh, the aspect of seeing it on television, that ancient suit coat they came up with him for, and it was all wrinkled and old and had a little belt in the back. So uh, I appreciated instead of just hearing about an old jacket uh, for a change, actually getting to see it. And I would mention one fabulous, uh, I have so appreciated, Daryl, you introducing me to more of Jack's television episodes to remember all the ways that he and his cre uh, co-creators could play up visual humor. And that one marvelous shot of the little boy just walking in front of him and Barbara Nichols and just standing there and standing there and standing there and then just shaking his head a little and walking on with just a, a fabulous bit that didn't need any um, uh, uh, joking language right. to be hilarious. So. Yes, yes. There, yeah, it... Um... I just love the way they they brought it across. I thought it I thought it it worked nicely and and just the whole concept in the original and in this version of it, it is just walking along and greeting all the people that they meet, which is what the song says. They sing the song that's from uh, Easter, Easter Parade. Easter parade. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. And so uh, it, it, it it's charming in the radio version. Uh, running into all the different characters, you know, whether it's Frank Nelson or whether it's uh, Mel Blanc. And then in this doing the same thing is just um, charming in its own way. And so I love that. Um, 
I didn't have and, a chance to watch this one, yeah. but I have a question for those who did. Sure. Does it live up to the cartoonishness that the radio version possesses? And I mean that in the sense of like some of the the one I remember from the radio show is Don Wilson saying like, "Well, I'd love to, but I'm on the other side of the street." Like the idea of him being yeah. so wide that he's extending his body to the other side of the street. I'm wondering if it lived up to the cartoonish. Well, he couldn't do that, that piece, category. so they changed the most changed piece is probably Don's piece. Mm. But I really liked it. It was it was Don wearing a dress and a, and he's got a a wig on and he he so <laughs> very large, Bob. very large, and he actually made a, uh, I wouldn't have questioned if I saw this woman on the street that she was a woman. So that's pretty impressive. But, but Zach, there were other uh, to use your word cartoonish yeah. uh, gags in this episode. They weren't the same ones, but they mm. were uh, there were others that yes, I think lived up to that reputation. I scanned, yes. I scanned the episode a little bit and saw Dennis with a duck, and I was like, okay, I, I know something's up. Good so, example. I, yeah. Good example. <laughs> yeah. Well, Terry, and tell well, us a little. Oh, go ahead. The, the thing about Don Wilson, in, in the episode, they're like, oh, I needed a shipbuilder to build this outfit or whatever, but you can actually see how big he is. So that does work better on the radio than Right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I think that was the, great. Who designed his dress was was a architect designed his dress. Yeah. <laughs> you know, whatever. Yeah, it, it's was... it's the one thing that I have issue with with the television shows is every time that Don uh, comes on screen, it it I t a little bit more of my imagination goes away as yeah. a result of it because I'm like, ah, he wasn't that big, but I, I think he handles like sound sound effects have helped him in certain respects with certain gags that they would do, especially with like a with an instrument accompanying him which you know lays into that whole the fat person stereotype but I, the 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 idea though that they were going to walk an entire set in live television fascinated me when i saw the listing this morning yeah um yeah so in the grand scheme of the d direction of television how did people feel about it like how did it hold up well one thing i was surprised about I didn't realize they were doing live shows this late. I thought by 60, mm. they'd gone to, to all um, not not being live anymore, to, to being film shows. But I wonder, d does anyone know, Kathy? I don't know if anybody knows. Like, how much further did they go with the live shows? Was 60 the last season with live shows, or did they even do more? I'm not sure. No, uh, I don't know offhand. But, yeah. but to think, other parts of the schedule, soap operas, game shows mm -hmm. so you're right well well so more parts of nighttime television had stopped being live mm -hmm. uh there was still if you were watching a whole day of television um th there was still oh, yeah. a lot and, and i would i would quibble a little bit with calling this a live show it was actually edited okay. uh, there yeah, there is a halfway through the show there's a really obvious uh cut Right, uh, and I don't know why they did it, but uh, maybe there was a technical problem, right. or maybe mm -hmm. they changed the script. I'm not sure, but it wasn't well, actually that, broadcast live. Well, okay, you're right. I mean, uh, that's a very good point. And and Laura uh, Leibowitz in her television volume says it was actually recorded on March 27th for broadcast on April 17th. So it was a recorded, but trying it, to look live yeah it felt, it felt edited. like it was a hybrid sort of thing so yeah a very good point yeah terry yeah, well what are your thoughts on this because because um i'm sure you have well, some thoughts um well the the first thing i want to say is that i again, keeping in uh, uh in uh with the rest of our conversation about the differences between radio and tv for jack benny this was the first episode for me that really started taking advantage of the medium. Uh, his writers, same writers he'd had for years in radio, were struggling with this transition. How do you make an audio gag funny on TV? Mm -hmm. And how do you leave aside some of those things that were purely audio and take advantage of the new medium? And one thing I'll, I'll point out is that uh, there was a, a wonderful joke about Jack... Uh, uh, taking a shower with his violin and on radio he had to explain what was happening on tv we could just see it and in fact he added to it by having this this goofy uh um brush added to the bow and you know he they really tried to to show you instead of just talking about what was funny right um 
and, and there were you know, plenty of others, and there's no need to go into those details, uh, but, but they did really work at this trans transition from radio to TV. I also want to mention Barbara Nichols. Uh, Kathy pointed out this was uh, the, the actress who played his girlfriend, uh, Mildred Meyerhauser. And not, I didn't know much about her. I had to, to do a little bit of digging, but uh, she was from Long Island, if you couldn't tell from her accent, and, and had kind of a, a tragic end to her career. She'd been very busy. She was kind of a, you know, a, um, a kind of a, a um, Marilyn uh, wannabe or, uh, you know, a, a big uh, blonde, kind of dumb, but not really dumb. And uh, she got into a couple of car accidents and died fairly young. I think she was in her 40s uh, oh. as, a, as a consequence of those two uh, car crashes. But she was very, very, very funny. And even though mm -hmm. in radio, where we miss hearing um, Mary walking with Jack in the television episode, she kind of did the, the Mary Livingston role. She wasn't dumb. Uh, she was clearly antagonistic to Jack in many ways. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was a sweet character also, and, and so I really enjoyed seeing her in this. The two actresses who played uh, members of Jack Benny's fan club were Madge Blake, who um, we might remember as playing Aunt Harriet on Batman. Uh, she, was also Larry, she was also Larry Mondello's mother on uh, Leave it to Beaver. And uh, the other actress was, uh, let's see if I've got her name here, uh, Jesslyn Fax who was also a very busy character actress. Um, and uh, the one actress I could not identify was the woman who played the TV interviewer. Does anybody know who that was? I couldn't find her in, in any cast listing, but she was- um, her, her name was Faye Baker, says- Faye Baker. I'll have to look her up. I, I couldn't find her anywhere. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing I'll mention for the for the benefit of our younger listeners is that at one point um, somebody mentions uh, it, it it might it might have been Barbara Nichols talking about oh yeah when Jack said afterwards he was going to take her out to uh, to uh, for an ice cream soda or something like that and to to do the the cheap joke she made reference to him being no uh, uh, Paul Getty and J Paul Getty was one of the wealthiest men. In America at that time, he was one of the first billionaires, I think, in, in the United you States. Go. You could say, uh, as Ridley Scott would, that he had all the money in the world. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yeah. But, he was, <laughs> but he was, but he ended up losing a grandson because of his wealth. Yep. Again, quite tragically. Yeah. yeah. Can, can I ask the question? Does it was that background? Was it a turntable? So was that a moving back? Because I thought maybe Jack and Barbara were standing still and the background was moving. Like it was could. a combination of them walking really slowly, uh, which looked kind of goofy. And yeah, I think, yeah. yeah, they must, the background must have moved. Like I was having trouble following it, but it was done quite elaborately because the camera moved along with it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was, it was a pretty good, um, pretty good device. Oh, and I guess there's one other thing we should mention, which is that, you know, Jack Benny is often described as the master of comic timing. That extended to, to his whole cast. I don't know how much of that was him choosing people who were good at it and him teaching people how to do, uh, to do comic timing. But you mentioned that, that kid standing there. That went on and on and on. And it was funnier and funnier and funnier. And uh, as we'll talk about in, in other episodes, the long takes that he does to milk every last ounce of uh, of laughter to me remains to this day almost 90 years later hilariously funny and brilliant brilliant yeah we mentioned that a few weeks ago the same thing it's just uh his, and you can tell if you listen to the rehearsal episodes of um the jack benny radio show you can hear him telling people okay wait just a little longer on that one uh, that you need to pick it up on this one. You're you're going too slow. He would be helping people with their speed and everything. So, so the timing, it, it, like you said, it feels like every actor has such great timing on these shows, and certainly on the radio shows too. But a lot of it is Jack's timing and Jack sharing with them to get the to get the uh, 
the timing right yeah for everybody. Well, on the radio he could do hand signals and tell people exactly when to yes. go but you can't do that on television no no television the only way to do it i guess would be with rehearsals getting uh and it wouldn't surprise me if they did a lot of rehearsals on jack's shows because they're the timing is so good i don't see oh, or you know the timing by the way was much better in this one we haven't uh, talked about it yet but yeah. the, uh, the the other episode from 1956 that we'll discuss mm -hmm. uh, at another time um the contrast was huge it was so much better in this one uh, mm -hmm. and i don't know how much of that again was him directly um controlling yeah. the pacing and how much of it was maybe his director uh, but it was much 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 sharper in this episode well like you're saying if this one wasn't live so it's filmed they could reduce they could go okay let's try that again and let's get this let's do it this way and let, you know and he could point things out the other one's live so that one they'd only do the rehearsals and after the rehearsals they're kind of stuck with whatever they produce live right so that'd yeah. be trickier um the other episode we're talking about is uh the passport episode and we're going to be doing that one today uh i thought i'd go ahead and mention it because um as our easter gift to all of you we're going to uh be taking a trip with jack and mary uh, as as they go uh across uh, all over the place and so the first thing we do is as we have to get his passport so we're going to present his passport episode and then from there on we will present the episodes luckily jack filmed a bunch of episodes that took place all over the the world and so we'll be presenting those he goes to uh uh england and he goes to venice and uh various places that we'll be presenting so i thought those would be fun to present a kind of a package that we're going to present um going forward as we're hitting into the summer and things uh, as i was on my spring break this week i was thinking oh it'd be fun to revisit i was thinking about because uh, I can't really travel much right now so it's like oh that'd be fun to travel and so I thought let's let's travel with Jack um anyway John uh did, were you going to point out anything else in this episode well, well you that. mentioned those two episodes they both share one bit which mm -hmm. is Jack getting his picture taken and you know he, he does he, they pull a line across and it's supposed to be like a finish line for a horse and you had mentioned before we started that yeah, it wasn't the strongest joke in the world but it just goes to show how much these actors bring to it. Mm -hmm. I agree. Both, both Mel Blanc and Frank Nelson made that whole camera guy hilarious, but in their own totally unique way. So it's not just they're relying on the material. That That's what I was noticing too, John. I, I was really, it was cool to see a scene done very similarly, but with, my two favorite actors on the Benny show or two of my favorite actors on the Benny show, Frank Nelson and Mel Blanc. Uh, I I'd have to say I enjoyed Mel's version better, but, but that's because his character was a full blown character. They spent more time with him. There was more jokes with him doing, doing the bit. Whereas Frank, uh, because of the way the show lays out that they can only spend so much time with any of the characters. Everybody just kind of pops in for a quick few lines that he doesn't have as much time to develop. And if they did, I'm sure that, that Frank would have done as good of a job. And and still funny the way Frank presents it and everything, I, I, I love yeah. that. Yeah. And of course, like everyone's mentioned, I love the Easter parade episodes of the radio show, yes. which they did a bunch of times. And then they also re-ran a bunch of times. And the energy on that one is so good. And so it was fun to be able to actually see it. Some of the jokes that you wouldn't think they would be able to do like the weighing machine joke they pulled yeah. off even on television which was a surprise so yeah it was fun yeah it, it, it does astound me think jokes that i think oh they're gonna replace this joke because it's not gonna work on television they find some way to make it work or or keep in the similar vein so i'm always impressed with how they dig deep to go okay how can we make this joke play visually and they usually find it a way in a in a weird way whenever he does that he's innovating what television will be capable of down the line and it's not like the great it's not like grand innovation like special effects on star trek or like the 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 innovative storytelling of the twilight zone it's more just that like it's small little tiny things like i think there's an emphasis on sound effects every time i watch a jack benny television show because <clears throat> 
it's almost like Jack because Jack would re recycle gags with his writers. It's almost like he doesn't want to lose and he doesn't want to have to come up with a replacement. If he knows that the material works, he's going to like move heaven and earth to get it done. Yeah. And I'm surprised that like ones that actually, I'm surprised that they succeed more often than they fail. Mm -hmm. Like the things that fail for me on the television shows tend to be broader concepts and ideas like the vault, like, which we've talked about. But tiny things, small, subtle things, which is one of Jack's specialties, excel on television as much as they did on radio because I think that the, the audience is primed to suspend their disbelief when it comes to early television and they're ready just for anything to happen on early television. If he had done this show, let's say 20 years later, let's say Jack didn't die in 1974 and – moved it into the 80s he wouldn't be able to get away with it the same way but because the the perfect storm collides with timing and luck those gags still permeate our minds as successes and the the idea of the idea of the weighing machine um or in one of the shows we're going to talk about the idea of repeating gags and repeating lines and Terry talked about how the timing is a little bit off by comparison to the other ones. Like, it's still amazing to see how much the audience is willing to just go with it, yeah. as opposed to, like, letting a joke fall flat. Because I've heard, and I've watched television shows from that era where the audience, if they don't like it, they don't like it. It yeah. seems like with Jack, they're willing to suspend their disbelief for the most part. And Zach, did you not notice that, uh, that Jack Benny did on this television episode what he did all the time on the radio which was these little ad-libbed sounding if they weren't actually ad-libbed uh asides he did it with uh with respect to don wilson he did it uh in in the beginning with uh with eddie anderson we haven't talked about rochester who had a key uh scene in the beginning of this episode but jack is still trying to do the uh the live sounding um asides um, yeah and Johnny Carson picked this up. He always said that, that Jack Benny was his was his idol, his role model. Mm -hmm. And when a joke fell flat for Johnny, he would he would say something, and that would milk it even even more. And Jack right. loved to do that in the radio. And and correct me if I'm wrong, Zach, but it sounded like he did this uh, once or twice on this television episode. It, I, uh, I if, if, yeah, if it it I I saw that, and it's you know i i'm always kind of astounded what jack will latch on to versus won't latch on to it's it's like i always feel like one gag will be more to his liking than the other and then i realize i don't really know jack the way i think i do you know? like, <laughs> but those as but those aside but those asides are essential because I, i've always kind of maintained that jack's comedy comes from subtlety that's that's amplified like so it's a subtle gag that is amplified for the purposes of the ridiculousness or um, like it's, it's almost like, it's like a Wes Anderson gag to an extent, except Wes Anderson pulls back, whereas Jack just pushes through like a freight train. Right. Um, but it's all based on subtle things, subtle, subtle instances. We'll talk about it with the other episode, but like, there's a gag that's repeated three times that when I, when I was watching it, I couldn't believe that they were pulling this gag off three times and that it somehow still worked because right. it is, it's a gag we know. But it's one that I didn't realize they were going to milk all the way yeah. through that episode. Well, speaking of that, I think we'll go ahead and head over to our other episode to chat about it. And we'll let people enjoy this Easter performance of the Jack Benny Show. And uh, I hope everybody has a wonderful Easter. And I'm glad we could get this recorded on the day before Easter for us in 2022. So uh, enjoy your Easter and enjoy the show and come back and tune in every year on Easter to check out this episode because it's a, it's a worthwhile bit of your time to spend. So enjoy. Thanks, everybody, and have a happy Easter, everyone. Bye. City in Hollywood. The Jack Benny Program with Dennis Day and Barbara Nichols. music on this beautiful Easter morning. 
And stay tuned in, because in just a short while, we'll be broadcasting from Wilshire Boulevard, where the citizens of Beverly Hills will meet for their annual stroll in the Easter Parade. Mm, Mr. Ben's gonna be late. He's sure taking a lot of time in that shower. Everybody else sings in the shower. He has to play his violin. <laughs> With all the frills upon it, I'll be the grandest fellow on the Easter Parade. Watch us, sir. <laughs> Rochester, you better better dry this off, will you? Yes, sir. I'll run it through the ringer. You will not, you'll hang it on the line like you always do. Hey, I'll bet Heifetz can't play intermezzo and scrub his back at the same time. <laughs> Here, put it away. Eh? Good. Okay. Rochester, why'd you put out my blue suit? So you can wear it in the Easter parade. Oh, for heaven's sake, you always want me to be so conservative. Look at it. I want to be, wear something springy. You know, I know what. Here. Maybe this, this white suit here, uh, I think uh, I would. Uh, boss, what? why don't you wear this brown one? Nah, I don't like the brown one. I'm going to wear this white. You know, I haven't worn this in years and years and years. Yeah, I like I, to wear it again. I, I know, but I think either the blue one or the brown Rochester, one. Rochester, look, wait a minute. I made up my mind I'm going to wear the white one, and that settles it. Now, here, put this away and get me a nice blue tie. Mm, yes, sir. A real nice. I want a bow tie. Oh, oh, boss. Yeah. Uh, while you were taking your shower, and Miss Meyerhauser called and left a message. Miss Meyerhauser? Oh, oh. Miss Mildred. Yes, yeah. my girl. Yeah. What did she say? Tell Poopsie I'll meet him at 10.30. <laughs> you, Poopsie? <laughs> well, it's just a word of endearment. You know, she's nuts about me. Anyway, I think I look pretty good since I've been dieting. Huh? Don't you think I look better? You look, better. You look about the same to me. Oh, what are you talking about? You're silly. I must have lost 10 pounds. Here, I'll show you. Here's a penny. I can't understand why the Beverly Hills police made me take this weighing machine off of the front lawn. <laughs> oh, here's my fortune. It says, you would be a financial success if you weren't such a spendthrift. <laughs> Here's my weight. It says, uh, what's this? It says I weigh uh, 102 pounds? This scale is way off. I could have told you that when you read the fortune. <laughs> Never mind. Listen, I better get ready. Oh, boss, 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 boss. Look, are you sure you want to wear this white suit? Look, Rochester, I said I'm going to wear the white suit. Now, let's not discuss it anymore, and that settles it. <coughs> Go ahead. Well, all right, then. I'll see you later. Rochester, are you going to walk in the Easter parade? Oh, yes, sir. But first I have to make a call to a girl I have a, a, a blind date with. i got to tell her about a change in plans. <laughs> what change in plans? I told her to be on the corner of 6th and Main and look for a man wearing a white suit. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he likes this suit so much, why did he give it to me in the first place? <laughs> See, I better hurry. I don't want to keep Mildred waiting.
But, Mildred, I wish when we were out walking on the street, you wouldn't call me Poopsie. Oh, don't be so uppity. If it's good enough for a drive-in theater, it's good enough for Wilshire Boulevard. <laughs> Let's walk, huh? You know, I'm sorry I'm late. I could have gotten here earlier, but I couldn't leave till I finished the egg roll. <laughs> oh, Miller, don't you think that you're a little too old for an egg roll? Well, what's age got to do with it? I had breakfast in a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, listen, the, the parade is starting about... Oh, it's down at the next corner again. Let's walk over there, shall we? Oh, wait a minute. What? Jackie, why'd you have to wear that white suit? <laughs> why? What's wrong with it? Well, I haven't seen a suit like that since Admiral Byrd got back from the South Pole. <laughs> well, I think it looks nice. Now, come on, let's, let's walk, huh? Uh. Huh? Hey, look at the theater. They're showing a revival of Easter Parade with Judy Garland and Fred Astaire. Oh, yeah. Say, I remember that, too. You know, I, I remember seeing that, and uh, that was the picture where Fred Astaire was walking down Fifth Avenue, you know, on Easter, and he was singing some kind of an Easter song, and uh, everybody on the street was answering him. I'm trying to think, what was that song again? I can't think. Never saw such a lovely day. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. It's such fun just to nod and say Happy Easter. Happy Easter. My, oh, me, there's so much to see at Strobe Avenue. And you greet all the friends you meet. <laughs> You, Mr. Benny, I thought it was Admiral Byrd. <laughs> well, I'm not. Dennis, uh, you know my girlfriend, don't you? Oh, sure. Hello, Hi. Mildred. Hi, Dennis. Uh, what are you, what are you doing? Where'd you get that duck? What are you doing? Oh, my aunt sent him to me for Easter. Isn't he cute? I call him Harvey. <laughs> oh, look at him. Uh, you got him today, and you, you named him already? I gotta work fast. I'm eating him tonight. <laughs> You're going to eat your Easter duck? Oh, sure. Last year, my aunt sent me a rabbit, and I ate him, too. <laughs> Dennis, do you eat all the pets you get on Easter? Yeah. <laughs> Holy smoke. Oh, this is awful. Why? Two years ago, I gave him a French poodle. <laughs> Dennis, do you mean that you? For weeks, I kept chasing cats up trees. <laughs> Dan, stop with that kind of silly talk. What a thing, anyway, with a duck. If you're going to walk, go we'll walk. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Come on, Pookie. Let's show off our legs. <laughs> what a silly kid. Look at him walking down the street there with that crazy duck. Ah, oh, Pookie, don't aggravate yourself. It's Easter. Yeah. And what a beautiful time of year. That, I don't know, it makes you feel so romantic and so young, doesn't it? Hey, you dance better than Nijinsky. When did you ever see Nijinsky? This morning. He owns the Chinese restaurant where I had breakfast. Oh, oh yes, I know the place now. Wang Fu Nijinsky. Eat now and get hungry later. <laughs> well, come on, huh? Let's walk. Mildred, if you want to walk, let's walk. <laughs> And there's a television camera. Let's go over and see what it is. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Of all the affairs I attend as fashion editor of the Tribune, I don't find any as exciting as talking to these lovely ladies of the Easter parade. Miss, if I may say so, that's a very lovely hat you're wearing. Oh, well, thank you. Glad you like it. It was designed by Robert of Marseille. It's 
very, very beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> this is a perfectly stunning outfit. May I have your name? Donna Wilson. <laughs> Donna Wilson? Hey, that's... that's Don Wilson. What is he made up like that for? He must... I don't know what he's up to. May I compliment you on your outfit? Who designed it? William Zeckendorf. <laughs> William Zeckendorf. Doesn't he build buildings? Yes, but uh, no one else would take on the job. <laughs> beautiful dress, but uh, did you lose your gloves? Oh, no, no. I left my gloves home purposely. I wanted everyone to see how lovely my hands are. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, they are lovely. Mm -hmm. And uh, here's my secret. <laughs> oh! Isn't this a new white plastic bottle of new pink lotion Lux liquid? Yes, yes, it is. It certainly is modern looking. And it's very practical, too. You see, it won't rust, won't chip, and can't slip out of your grip. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> you see, new pink lotion Lux liquid has a selective formula that works hard against hard surfaces like dishes. And yet, it's so gentle, your hands don't even know it's there. Oh, I know. I use it myself. I find it's both mild to my hands and hard working in the dishpan. And you know, new pink lotion Lux liquid cuts grease quicker and cleans dishes cleaner. Well, thank you very much for stopping, Mrs. Wilson. Well, thank you. And you're very nice to ask me all those leading questions. Easter. <laughs> <laughs> Guy, that Don Wilson. Imagine him getting dressed like that just so he could sneak in a commercial. And I bet on the way home on, on the bus, he gets a seat. Only if two people stand up. <laughs> <laughs> Three. His girdle just broke. And now let's stroll on down the avenue and talk to some of the other people. Oh, here's a celebrity. One of television's funniest comedians, Mr. Jack Benny. Well, thank you. I... I wouldn't consider myself one of the funniest, although I do ad-lib quite a bit. In fact, uh, for instance, uh, you know, I was nearly late for the parade because I had to wait till I uh, finished uh, the egg roll. Aren't you a little old for an egg roll? Well, what's age got to do with it? I had breakfast in a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that good? <laughs> so that's for me! Quiet! Well, thank you. Oh, by the way, this is my girl, Mildred, Mildred Meyerhauser. Well, you really are very, very lovely, and it must be quite a thrill to keep company with such a big star. Some thrill. His idea of a big time is to take me walking every night. <laughs> How long have you been going together? About 300 miles. <laughs> really? Well, anyway, thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Miss Bennett. You're welcome. Never stop such a lovely day. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. You look cute in that all white suit. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. My own me, there's so much to see. And you throw me avenue. And you greet all the friends you meet. Happy Easter to you. Gosh, I don't know. I don't know. It's so beautiful today, and the sun is shining, and the skies are so bright. And hey! Look who's coming down the street. Oh, it's my violin teacher, Professor LeBlanc. Bonjour, mon Chabini. Well, well, I certainly didn't expect to see you here, Professor. Hello, uh, Professor. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Do you look so nice today? Is that a new Easter suit? Mademoiselle, I am a poor violin teacher. I cannot afford to buy new suits. Well, what do you do with all the money I pay you for my violin lessons? I buy sleeping pills. <laughs> Well, are they any good? No, after a few days, I wake up. <laughs> well, too bad. 
that. Well, it was nice seeing you. And don't forget, Professor, tomorrow you have to give me another violin lesson. Oh, I will not forget. I will put a string around my finger. <laughs> oh, good, good. Whether I should put a rope around my neck. <laughs> what? Uh, nothing. Now, if you do not mind, I will go for a walk on the freeway. A walk on the freeway? Well, goodbye. Could be. <laughs> I wonder why he hates to give me violin lessons. Huh? I don't know either. I think you play beautifully. You do? Yeah. <laughs> What's so funny about it? Say, so anything. want to make his girl jealous. <laughs> That's not going to stop me. I'm going to cross the street and go right over there. Emma! In this traffic, you can get killed. I'll chance it. <laughs> now, we're not going to do anything foolish. After all, we saw Jack Benny. <laughs> now, let's walk another block, and then we'll go up to the club so we can get in before the handball courts are taken. <laughs> and you serve first. <laughs> Never saw such a lovely day. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. It's such fun just to nod and say happy Easter. Happy Easter. My, oh, me, there's much to see at Strolly Avenue. And you greet all the friends you meet. Happy Easter to you. Hey, wait, there's a photographer. Tell you what, let's have our picture taken, huh? Oh, no. I'm not going to have my picture taken with you in that white suit. Well, all right, then I'll have it taken myself. <coughs> oh, mister. Mister. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to have my uh, picture taken. Well, good. <laughs> It just stand right over there, Admiral. <laughs> I'm not Admiral Burr. <laughs> Good, I better line you up. All right. Now, if you'll just put your nose on this string. <laughs> <laughs> Why? What are you doing this for? And I used to shoot photo finishes at Santa Anita. Stop it. Look, all I want is to have my picture taken. All That's right, all. All right. Yeah. Yeah, would you mind rolling your trousers up above your knees? My trousers? Yeah. Like this? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You don't overdo it. Why, 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 why do you want to see my knees in the picture? Yeah, I don't want to see your knees, but the less we get of that suit, the better off we are. Now stop that, will you? 
you please just take my picture? Yeah, all right, all right. Now, I have to get you in focus. <laughs> there we are. Sit down. Open your mouth and smile. What? 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 Are you trying to make me look ridiculous? No, no you ever! <laughs> Wait for it, or shall I mail it to you? Mail it to me, my home. 366 North Camden Drive. 366 North... Oh, that's the house with the weighing machine out in front. <laughs> they made me take it in. Oh, now get out of here, will you? All right. Hey, for sausage, how he can ever even make a living doing that. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll tell you what we'll do, Mildred. We'll walk about another mile, and then I'll buy you an ice cream soda. Thank you, Paul Getty. <laughs> Thank you, Paul Getty. Thank you. Again? What'd you do with the duck? Oh, Harvey, he laid an egg, so I took it to the Hollywood Maternity Hospital. <laughs> a duck to the Maternity Hospital? I hope it's a boy. They're delicious. <laughs> Dennis, if you have to open your mouth, instead of saying those silly things, it's Easter, why don't you sing? You mean right here on the street? Of course, everybody, today is Easter, everybody is singing on the street. You heard them, aren't they, Doc? And I always feel like sing singing when I'm with you, Poopsie. <laughs> Dennis, please. Honestly, it's all right. Sing on the street. Okay. Everybody. Okay, Poopsie. <laughs> Fun today walking in the parade, wasn't it? Huh? Oh, it was. We sure walked a long way. Yeah, I'm tired too. Well, you ought to be. You've walked in a lot more Easter parades than I have. Yeah. I <laughs> hey, see. What? Get some ice, huh? All right. Oh, oh, waiter, waiter, will you bring some ice, please? See, I wish I knew what we wanted to eat too. So. Bring us a menu. <laughs> oh, that feels so good. Ooh, my feet were really on fire. 
Well, I hope they cool off because we've got to walk all the way home. Now. Okay, okay, but I'm warning you. I change boyfriends every 500 miles. I know, I know. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be back in two weeks, and next week be sure to watch The George Goble Show, brought to you by Stripe, the red and white toothpaste. Good night. The Jack Benny Program is a J&M production. Hello, folks. This is Kate Smith inviting you to enjoy some of America's finest music on our show tomorrow evening on most of these stations.